Zero Accounting Software 2023 Bank Rules Same Vendor Two Accounts Filtered by Amount. Get ready to become an accountant hero with Zero 2023. Here we are in our custom zero home page going into the company file we set up in a prior presentation the bank feed file let's duplicate those tabs to put the reports in like we do every time right clicking on that first a word from our sponsor well actually these are just items that we picked from the youtube shopping affiliate program but that's actually good for you because these aren't things that were just given to us from some large corporation which we don't even use in exchange for us selling them to you. These are things that we actually researched, purchased, and used ourselves. Bayer Dynamic, not sure if I said that right, but this is the DT770 Pro 250 OHM Studio Reference Closed Back Headphones. I wear headphones basically every day for a large part of the day. They are important to me. Therefore, I've gone through many different kinds of headphones. I've had these for some time and they've worked quite well. They fit over my ears, but I'm still able to put my glasses on under the headphones. The headphones not pinching too tight on the glasses to give me a headache, which is nice. The quality of the padding is good and it has lasted for some time. I've had these for some time now and they haven't gotten all torn up on me or anything like that. I also like that I have a cord when I'm doing my recordings as opposed to a USB centered headphone because that frees up a USB port and I find the USB headphones to be less reliable. They come with an audio jack that looks like this, which is useful for me because that plugs into my audio interface. However, if you want to use the headphones for some other purpose, I believe it's fairly easy to get a converter to other types of audio jacks. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com where we have many different courses. You can purchase one at a time or have a subscription model giving you access to all the courses. Courses which are well organized have other resources like Excel files and PDF files to download and no commercials that tab up top so we can duplicate it and then we will right click again and duplicate again let's go back to the tab to the middle accounting drop down open up the balance sheet report tab into the right accounting drop down this time of course the income statement sometimes called the profit and the loss i just call it profit because i have no losses man losses aren't a thing i don't i manifest my destiny by not thinking about losses i only manifest profits uh anyways 2022 uh by going to the end tab date 2022 uh the 31st and update it so there we have it let's go on to the first tab now and go to our bank feed information accounting drop down we've got the bank accounts that's where our bank feed stuff is we're going into the checking account We've updated information to our checking account. We're in the reconcile tab. We're doing our best to try to construct everything we can from the bank feeds. So the stuff comes in from the bank feeds and we're creating the transactions from the bank feeds. We're looking at some more complex rules. Most of the time, the rules are pretty straightforward. We paid the telephone bill. So we, we assigned Verizon to the telephone expense, straightforward but sometimes they could be a little bit more confusing. This time, we wanna look at a little bit more nuanced rule around whether or not we record something as, say, supplies, or whether we're gonna record it as an asset, a fixed asset. So Office Depot, for example, any kind of, any kind of Home Depot type of store, this could be the case because we might be purchasing a whole bunch of stuff, mainly supplies from it, but sometimes we might be purchasing equipment from it and we want to be able to set up a rule that can distinguish or at least give us an indication as to whether we might have to record something a little bit differently. So here's like, like Office Depot here and then we've got some other Office Depots and some more expensive stuff that we purchased from Office Depot on uh, the second page. So let's think about this in a general conceptual format. If I go to my balance sheet here, uh, note 
the, obviously the checking account's going down. Most of the time we're gonna go to the income statement and just record it as an expense of supplies because that's what we normally purchase from let's say Office Depot. But sometimes we might purchase something that we have to categorize as an asset. Now this is one of those areas where even if you're a small company, you often have to deviate from a cash-based system. You might say, well, I don't wanna, I don't wanna deviate from a cash-based system. I don't care if I bought like a you know, $10,000 piece of equipment. I wanna per, I paid cash for it. I wanna just reduce uh, the, or record it as an expense. But if you're in the United States, at least, you might have to deal with taxes and the tax code, even for small businesses, is gonna force you to put it on the books as an asset and then to depreciate it. So you wanna make sure you're in compliance, at least for that reason. And obviously, just from a, con a conceptual framework, it makes sense to put something on the books as an asset if it's a large purchase, even if paid cash, because if, for example, you purchased a, a $50,000 piece of equipment for cash and you expensed it in January and then you tried to compare your January and February income statements, you would have this $50,000 supplies expense in January and very little supplies expense in February and it would make it look like you had a bad January, which isn't the purpose of the income statement in general. The purpose of the income statement is to try to measure performance over time. And what really happened is you purchased a $50,000 thing that you're gonna be using multiple periods into the future. So that's why we wanna put it on the books as an asset and then allocate the cost over the time frame that we're gonna use it. That's that accrual kind of concept. So as we do this, also just realize that on the balance sheet, if you put things into the equipment account, you wanna make sure that you're kind of lined up with whatever your sub ledger will be used to track the equipment for the depreciation and accumulated depreciation often done in the United States by external software such as tax software due to the fact that even small businesses are gonna to have to do their taxes and you're gonna to have to put this into the tax software anyways and depreciate it on a tax basis. So you might as well use that same tax software to calculate your book basis as well, whether or not your book basis is simply gonna be on a tax basis or whether you can have two different basises in the United States, a tax basis and a book basis. So you wanna to talk to your accountant or tax professional or whatever software that you're gonna be using to see what account categories they have in their depreciation sub ledgers so you can line up your accounts here for things that you're purchasing to the sub ledgers. Also just realize that when you purchase equipment, you might sometimes be having a loan related to the equipment. So now you might put a down payment on the equipment, you might finance the rest of the equipment, and then you have a loan. Now there's three accounts affected. Now that can be a little bit confusing when you're putting a loan on the books as you purchase equipment and using the bank feeds just from a bookkeeping perspective. So a couple different ways you could deal with that. You could see the loan come through from the bookkeeping perspective and put it on the books, track the loan with an amortization schedule and so on. Or possibly you could try to keep everything as much as possible on a cash-based system or at least a system that you can automate with zero, keeping all the documentation for loans as well as uh, the equipment purchases to then have adjusting entries possibly at the end of the year done by your tax professional or CPA firm or accountant at that point in time. In that case, you could just say, I'm just gonna record the money that I paid in the equipment asset. I'm gonna save all the documentation so at the end of the year, the accountant can shore up the loan, the loan balance and all that kind of stuff. All the payments I make on the loan, I'm just gonna record to a loan account instead of breaking out the interest so that I can automate my system with the bank feeds and then give all this documentation to my accountant at the end of the year that can shore up the information, entering the proper transaction for the equipment, taking into consideration the loan, breaking out the interest portion of the loan, and breaking out short-term and long-term uh, loan account if necessary. Okay, so let's go back to the first account. We're really just kind of focused on the bank rule. We're gonna come up with an arbitrary rule here saying, hey, if it's below $1,000, just expense it. Now that $1,000 limit is kind of arbitrary 
because we're just picking a number in theory. If you're using something for more than a year, you should put it on the books as an asset. But in practice, of course, uh, it's kind of immaterial under a certain dollar amount. So you can pick whatever dollar amount you think is appropriate. I'm gonna choose $1,000, right? So I'm gonna say, all right, let's create a rule. And this is the office. So, so it's gonna be any conditions match. I'm gonna say that all conditions have to match now. And I'm gonna say that uh, it has to have a description that contains, or well, let's, do, let's do the bank, the any text. So the normal thing is if it contains Office Depot, that's just like normal. And you also have to have this rule met that the amount is below is less than, the amount has to be less than $1,000. If it's less than a thousand dollars we're just going to write it off to an expense if it's more than a thousand dollars and it's office depot don't apply this rule because we might have to put it on the books as an asset so i'm going to say uh existing contact let's put let's just copy the name where's the name office depot i can copy it from here copy that boom office depot and i'll say under a thousand well no let's just call it office depot what are you doing that's okay there's our our new vendor and then we're going to say down here that this needs to go to uh supplies supplies and then i'm not doing the location thing well <laughs> that was our new location field we, we played with last time uh we won't but you could assign it to a location because we added that here and then reference i'm going to say it applies to all the uh accounts and the name of the rule office depot under one thousand dollars all right so there it is let's go ahead and save it and then th now this might be the only rule that you apply right because i can go into here and say okay this one's good under a thousand no problem and this one is good it's under a thousand let's pull that one in this one Office Depot didn't apply the rule because it's over a thousand dollars, right? So, so it applied, so it didn't apply that rule there. That's what we want. Now you could leave it like that. You could just say, well, if it's over a thousand dollars, then I'm going to decide whether or not I want to put it on the books as supplies or as equipment of some other equipment account, because I might then have to decide if I need to put it into equipment or tools or, you know, whatever a category, but usually it would be equipment. Or what we will do shortly is make another rule that will say if it's over a thousand dollars, you want to put it into the fixed asset. All right, so I'm going to go to the tab. Let's go and see what we've done so far before we do that. Update the balance sheet. So checking accounts going down. So that's no. I'm not. I don't even need to look at it because we've done that. We see. We that's that's uh whatever. And then we go to the income statement and in supplies. We recorded the supplies according to the rule. Straightforward, except that we had that dollar limit restricting uh, the other stuff. So there's these pulling in, MUI B to the end, spend money form B in, so it looks good. Let's go to the first tab again. And now let's create the other rule saying, hey, look, if it's from Office Depot and over a thousand, put it into equipment, not supplies. So we're gonna hit the drop down but not too hard, just tap the drop down. Create a bank rule and let's make another one. And we want all conditions. So all the conditions must be met. One, any text, the, the normal part of the rule. If it contains Office Depot, that's one bit, but we have another whole piece, whole component down here. You also have to, this has to happen as well or else you can't do it. Don't do the rule zero. So it has to be uh, greater than a thousand dollars so there we have it so now we have one rule under a thousand one greater than a thousand now you might be saying well what if i had a bill for exactly a thousand dollars well then the t you know the two rules might not catch it and you'd have to put it but you could make a third rule that said uh it was equal to a thousand dollars if you really want to but you'd probably be pretty safe with just the two rules you can make it even more precise you could put pennies on it so that you know it would be down to the penny instead of to the dollar and you'd only have if it was you know or whatever so but we'll keep it like that i think we'll be okay 
So then I'm going to also say this is uh, Office Depot, same vendor. And then this is going to be equipment and okay. And then I'm going to say reference all accounts and then Office Depot over $1,000. Let's go ahead and save it and check that out. So now it's applying this rule here. So it applied it there. Now it's picking that up. Boom. Shaka laka. Here's this under rule. Here's the over rule. And, uh, and here's the under rule. All right. Let's go to the balance sheet and see what happens. K Paso. K in the world. Paso over here. K for the love of Dios Paso. All right. So then we're going to say that uh, the checking account went down and the equipment account went up. So if I go into the equipment account, uh, we can see then we had the change happening. It's happening here. So uh, Office Depot there for the over if it's over a thousand and then and then on the other side if all the stuff that was under went to of course once again the supplies account let's update it supplies all right and so if i go to the first tab we can check out those rules if we want to modify the rules by the way i can go to the accounting drop down bank accounts and we can check out all these rules that we've been making all these super cool rules you know, I used to not like rules, but when I'm making the rules, then they're excellent. I make good rules. Other people don't make good rules. That's the problem. People making rules that I have to follow. They don't know what they're doing. But when I'm making the rules, then, then the rules are perfect. So if it's Office Depot under a thousand, Office Depot over, if you, if you needed to edit this thing, then you go into it and you can make your modifications uh, over here. So there we have that. So that looks good. Now, just a quick note that if I go to the balance sheet, uh, we have the items in the equipment. You might be asking, well, when are we going to expense these items? We're going to expense them in the form of depreciation. And that will typically happen in the United States. You might want to track that again with a separate schedule with the tax depreciation schedules because you're going to have to add it to the tax depreciation anyways. And, and then you can get the depreciation schedules from there, either on a tax basis, if you want to run your books on the tax basis to match the tax code, or you can have it do it on a, on a, on a book basis. Uh, possibly most, a lot of software can do that. And then we would do periodic adjustments, possibly at the end of the month, possibly at the end of the year, which usually have another account, which would be uh, credit to, uh, to, you know, accumulated depreciation for the equipment. And once we start adding those separate accounts for equipment, automobile and stuff, Zero has this really nice editing layout item down here that allows us to group, for example, the equipment account to the related accumulated depreciation. We can put the uh, equipment on top, even though the, the, the alphabetical order would be reversed. So really nice flexibility to customize our statement more so, I think, than other software like uh, QuickBooks Online with sorting out uh, the equipment. So that's how that would generally work.